Atalanta is currently experiencing one of the brightest periods in their over 100 year history. After years of desperately trying to stay in the Serie A, the Italian side has managed to carve their way into the top flight of European football. This is due to mainly one fantastic coach, Giampiero Gasperini. In only three years, Gasperini has taken his team through a very quick transformation, bringing lots of players from the youth sector into the first team. Before we look at how this team plays and lines up on the pitch, let's look at some of their impressive statistics. They finished third in the Serie A with 78 points, only five points behind the reigning champions Juventus. But the most impressive feat from last season is the 98 goals scored. This number is incredible and places Atalanta in the top three scoring teams in Europe, behind Manchester City and Bayern Munich. Now let's look at their preferred attacking routes. The majority of Atalanta's play happens down the wing, with 38% on the left, 26% down the middle, and 36 on the right wing. The Northern Italy team also achieved the highest number of shots per 90, with 8% in the 6-yard box, 57 in the 18-yard box, and 35% of their shots coming from outside the area. This means they're a team that's not afraid to have a go from distance to catch the keeper off guard. These statistics are incredibly impressive. Let's look at how they achieved that by looking at their starting lineup. Atalanta's preferred starting 11 would look like this, lining up in a 3-4-2-1. The front three would often rotate, and the 3-4-2-1 could easily become a 3-4-1-2, usually with Gomez acting as the attacking midfielder, and Ilicic and Zapata playing further up the pitch. We can see the clear advantages that this formation brings by looking at the way that Atalanta like to attack. As a very progressive team, Atalanta's preferred method is to play it out from the back. The three centre-backs are all good ball players, and so the goalkeeper will often try and look for them from goal kicks. The centre-backs have the most passes per 90 in the team, a testament for their ability to move the ball and break the opposing press. The centre-backs will drift wide to collect the ball. When the wide centre-backs have the ball, a number of different options are available to Atalanta at all times. Firstly, a triangle is formed between the fullback and the holding midfielder. Secondly, if the space is available, the two attacking midfielders will create a diamond by attacking the half space. From this position, the wide centre-back has three options available to him. He could either offload the ball to the fullback, find the pass in the middle or go long to the attacking midfielder. The other option that's available to the wide centre-back is to offload the ball to the full-back and attack the space between the attacking midfielder and the holding midfielder, where in this position he's unlikely to be followed by his man marker. Let's take a look at how this works with the opposing team. Let's assume the opposing team is playing with a 4-3-3. This creates a 4v4 situation on either wing. This is where things get interesting. In the instances where the Atalanta front three have rotated and they're playing with a 3-4-1-2, Gomez is free to create an overload on either wing. So let's say he moves over to the left where the ball's being played. This now creates a situation which is a 5v4, which is incredibly difficult for the teams to defend against, because there's a lot of space down the middle for Atalanta to exploit. One key element to Atalanta's wide play is the whip they maintain on the other side of the pitch. While it's common for teams to shift the majority of their players to the side where the ball is, Atalanta will hold their shape on the other side, allowing for swift switches in play to overload on the other wing. This serves two purposes. Firstly, if the team decides to defend wide and stick with their man on the opposing wing, then this opens up the centre for Atalanta to move down and create dangerous opportunities. In this case, the holding midfielder has the ball. If the opposing team decides to press the two holding midfielders, then this leaves Gomez with plenty of space, which will often result in one of the two centre-backs being dragged out of position. However, if the defending team decides to commit to the press on one side of the ball, then a swift ball across the pitch can easily catch the team unprepared. This style of aggressive and fast football allows them to find space in dangerous places. Now, let's look at how they're covered defensively. When they are out of possession, their natural positioning makes it difficult for teams to move down the centre. If possible, Atalanta will try and press high. 
This all depends on what formation the other team is playing. If, as we see here, the opposing team is playing with two central defenders, then Atalanta will line up like this, with a 2-1, with Zapata usually pressing high and Gomez and Illichid trying to cut the passing legs to the fullbacks. The fullbacks will also attempt to move up the pitch to press the opposing team defenders. And the two holding midfielders will attempt to cover any passing into the centre of the pitch. When facing three at the back, Atalanta's fullbacks will push up to press the opposing team's fullbacks. And Gomez Ilch and Zapata will press as a three, with the two holding midfielders staying high up the pitch to press the two midfielders. As you can see, Atalanta will attempt to man mark on the opposing team press. However, their compact shape will attempt to cut the passing lanes between the players. Let's take a look at what happens when their offensive press is broken. If the opposing team is able to move the ball into the midfield, the fullbacks will drop deep to become a 5-4-1 formation with the wide centre-backs moving in to close the half spaces. The two holding midfielders will drop in to cover the space in midfield, with the two attacking midfielders dropping deep as well, leaving only Zapata up top. If the opposing team is able to move the ball to an area where they threaten a cross, then Atalanta will have a mix of zonal and man marking in the area. Firstly, one of the wide centre-backs will cover the front post. The central centre-back will man mark the opposing team's striker, and the back post will be covered by the wide centre-back and the full-back, who will double up, with the two holding midfielders sitting outside the area to stop any balls into zone 14. This makes it incredibly difficult for the other team to find space. This style of football may seem perfect on paper, however, it does leave some weaknesses that need to be highlighted. Let's take a look. Their impressive attacking football does however leave them exposed at the back on numerous occasions. Their goals conceded are pretty high, sitting at 48 goals last season. The main difficulties lie in the opposing team hitting them with counters. If the opposition team is able to break down Atalanta's attack, they'll often be able to attack in the half spaces, as they are often outnumbered at the back when the fullbacks have pushed up. Secondly, they are quite exposed at the back with crosses, with midfielders usually lagging behind to help cover on the back post and easily losing their man. In the current season, Atalanta haven't had the best start. However, if they're able to resolve the issues that they're currently facing in defence, Atalanta will be able to challenge for the Serie A title in the next few years. If you like this style of content, please be sure to stick around and leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.